Just a little short update on how things are growing in the grow room. Tomatoes are coming right along. Along with the flower buds starting on the golden pearls. What I've been doing sometimes, I have this electric fan here that I, it's another extra fan that I uh, have trained on the stove to get as much heat out of the stove as possible. I blow it on the tomato plants, giving some resemblance, of course, of the wind outside. And then I put the fan back over by the stove again. Every one of the Apache F3 peppers come up. So I got 100% germination. I've got two hot Portugal peppers. I got one, two. But out here, there's another one. That's the yellow B I Q U I N H O. And in behind, you see one, two coming up there. One breaking through up right here. That's the padrons. Now here's a disappointment. This is the patchy F3. But if you go over... So now, I was thinking that it was a large fly or something that did that. And so I put this yellow sheet here. caught the one fly now there are more around here than that I mean one fly wouldn't do all of that but that fly is big enough to carry it off you see all the uh, fungus gnats I knew they were around but they don't uh, they wouldn't be able to carry off a leaf like that so I have quite a few of the pepper plants now Today, I don't remember if these were damaged when I put the uh, other sheet on the other side. But this morning I put this second sheet here. So that at any fly coming in like that, it would cross over that sheet and hopefully get caught. Now what I'll do, I'll just, these aren't going to come to anything now, so I'll put another seed in every cell that has a uh, little sprout up with the leaves gone and uh, we'll start over again that was the Lola Rosa uh, lettuce I got them up potted January the 4th and I have to up pot these early curled Simpson this is a, as big as they got uh, when I come across these first time they were actually at a uh, nursery and I was wandering around the nursery and I seen some plants in one of these at about this size and the owner walked by right at the same time and uh, she said yeah we gotta help pot those and so that's the size I'm looking for when I uh, think about whether I've got to help pot them made a new uh, dibber so it'll make a good hole for those plugs to go down in. There we go. Ten little pots of lettuce. And now after I'm done recording here this cabbage, I'm going to hot pot those. Here's the lettuce. Put them in little two inch pots. That should be big enough for the lettuce. And I'll move back here. 
I mean this shelf over here. When I put the letters there I realized I have two lights up here. Of course I have three on that one down there and I have no lights on this shelf and I just got a bunch of curtain containers put there. But I do have the wicking mats on them all and I have the uh, trough suit on the end on this shelf. So I'll up pot those cabbages. I'm going to pot them up for now into these pots this size and I'll move them over uh, by these lettuce until they get bigger. This was one of the basil that I had upstairs. It was still alive so I put it down there and it's getting its water from the wicking mat. The rest of them they're dead. Of course I've got bees all started in, the, in that 200 cell flat, right? The radishes are growing along. They're getting up uh, actually in, in the back there. There's some up right up to the light so I think I'll have to move those radishes now over to the other shelf beside the lettuce as well. They are actually looking like they're starting to thicken up. So maybe next week you'll see a thickened radish, who knows, let's see. I don't have to move the uh, medicinal plants over quite yet, but it's getting close, so I might move all of those potted up things over to the other shelf now uh, before I go to bed tonight. Now I'm curious, so we're going to do this. I think the three-year-old Tiny Tim completely died. And I remember I was saying it was so hard to keep it uh, hydrated, keep the water to it. So we're going to see what the root structure is like on this. That's the other problem, right? It uses up the nutrients in the soil that's in there. So then you end up having to actually put in uh, some kind of liquid fertilizer that it's in the house so you don't want it to smell. But I mean, this one went three years. It went two years without me adding any nutrients at all. Two full years, I believe it was over two years. When we start another one now like those downstairs we'll know exactly when we actually planted them we'll keep them in those pots and see how long they'll last if you plant them in a gallon pot in pretty much pure compost Tiny Tim will be a much bigger plant than those down there. Coming out in one big block. I'll put it out on this tray so I won't have as much mess to clean up. Grab that later. Let's take off all the tomatoes. Oh, I wouldn't call that super root bow. As we're saying, even though this looks like good compost. The nutrients have been sucked out of it by the uh, tomato plant, so pretty much all I have to just 
bring this out now and throw it in the compost bin and then it'll be mixed in with the other actually nutrient rich soil but I mean the I could use it you know for uh, seed starting maybe that's what I'll do I'll keep this for the seed starting mix the seed starting mix don't have any nutrients in it either it's just this soft fluffy stuff and the fine roots of this uh, tomato plant is actually added to the uh, structure for a uh, seed starting mix so that's what I'm going to do I'll grind it down and I'll sift it and I'll put it in with the rest of the seed starting mix I got downstairs so now this looks like it's a small root system here but it's just that it had really fine roots going right throughout pretty much the entire pot So that's basically what we had there and uh, we'll say R.I.P. Rest in peace to the three year old, a little over three year old Tiny Tim and we'll start a new one. It's dark out now and it's dark here so I'm going to just bring the plants in. I need to give them some water now. Uh, but I have been checking uh, it's a little bit where I had let it dry out before but it's doing fine this is a uh, lavender and it smells nice too when you just brush against that so I give that some water there now I had a really good display of blooms on this Christmas cactus but it seems like it was going to put on some more uh, blossoms a bud there and another one down there that started and then dried out again I don't know what the reasoning behind that was it wasn't because the uh, soil dried out I'm gonna have to start a new one here as well a uh, new uh, bucket of compost but uh, remember about all the dead pieces that comes in here every so often you just have to go and just chop it right down and let it grow up again it's no good to be just cutting off little pieces because you have parts dying all the time if you do that in among the rest of it so when you're going to harvest just cut everything down like you're mowing grass and uh, take the entire thing and let this part grow up again this pepper struggled for the longest time and he came back this past spring now there's a little bit of growth right here it died back I'm assuming because of the lack of light it is doing fine I um, think I'm going to plant it in the ground this year once again it's going to be the same as your tomatoes your tomatoes are tropical perennials and so is a pepper and so you put it in a pot like this and grow it, a lot, uh, grow it along as long as you can as long as you can keep pot like if I had put it in a bigger pot now I could take this up and uh, put it in a bigger pot with compost and I could even cut back the roots when I'm doing it and then grow it on some more but for now it's going to stay in there and uh, come spring it should start growing again like I said there's a little bit of growth on it right now and uh, in June we'll actually plant this one in the ground and decide on what we're going to do with it when the uh, 
temperatures start cooling down again in September. The other pepper plant, I don't never do know what's going to happen with this one. It looks quite dead now, so it's sitting there, and uh, we'll see if it ever comes back. If it doesn't, we will. Uh, that's okay. We are going to be starting new ones. See, with the with these, what I'm trying to do is that I have a few plants that it's like extending your growing season. But it's, you start them and you have them as a house plant in the winter, put them outside in the summer and uh, with the pot that is in, let it grow on as long as it's got nutrients there and when it uh, runs out of nutrients then it'll just die and you refresh the thing. That's the plan. I just haven't figured it out yet. Out here, this one, uh, I'm happy with this one, really happy. Actually, it's growing really nice. I tried this plant with sweet marjoram twice before. And so, third time, looks like I'm going to have a good plant. I can uh, move this up now to a bigger pot. Once again, no sign of uh, coffee trees this I think this is fine it's uh, stayed moist and it's just of course the temperatures are going just above 10 degrees and down below curry plant they're doing wonderful I don't know yet how to use these see the curry plant and the spice curry uh, this curry powder that you buy is two different things so I've got to do some research but they're doing beautifully and I'm really happy with this as well this is the rosemary and uh, it's growing wonderfully nice now I would hear with the rosemary I think I'll take one of these curry and plant them over there because what I could do in this bed is I can dig a hole bury compost and then cover it back over so you won't get a big smell here and it's cut off from the house anyway uh, so I think that's what I'm gonna do plant one of these curry plants right there where that uh, pepper plant is so that's it it is disappointing that there is a bug that's uh, taken the leaves there hopefully I'll catch them now with having the sticky sheets on either end and what I remembered I'm going to turn it on now. I have a heat mat. It's a two foot by four foot heat mat underneath this. And I'll turn it on so the pepper plants, when they come up, they'll be much more vigorous anyway. And maybe then they'll outrun the any attack that a bug will have on them. So like I say, that's our little mini tour. Hope you enjoyed the little tour and uh, I'll see you in the next video.